Good day, I'm Brom from Experience Wild Africa. I am on my way to 4x4 Mega World to initiate a phase two of my Toyota Hilux Overland setup. I am considering replacing my suspension with a more robust and purpose-built suspension for my needs. I drive a Toyota Hilux 2017 Revo, it's a 2.8 GD6 model. Currently I'm on 73,000 kilometers and I still have the factory leaf springs, but I have replaced my shocks with Camel's coil over units at about 3,000 kilometers. I need to change them. The ride is harsh. It is bumpy, even if it is loaded. I am planning to also fit an aluminium clamshell rooftop tent, as well as a 270 awning, and that means additional weight. My current suspension is not up to the task, and therefore I need the advice from the experts. We're going to speak to Rikus at 4x4 Mega World and see what he suggests. These are the famous BP-51 shock absorbers. Unfortunately, out of my price range. Beautiful ARB bull bar. ARB intensity sport lights. This is a beautiful bull bar for Hilux. Okay, thank you for speaking to me. I am here at 4x4 Mega World because I need to fit an aftermarket suspension. Mine doesn't do what it's supposed to do. I am fairly heavily loaded. Uh, my constant weight at the back ranges between 350 kilograms all the way up to 600 kilograms, depending on what I load and where I go to. I need your advice. First of all, why do overlanders need to consider an aftermarket suspension? What's the pros and what's the cons of it? And can you please educate us and tell me why you today spend money then? Well, that's a very simple question to answer. Um, a manufacturer, irrespective of brand, makes a vehicle uh, and they set it up for a world market. Four passengers, a little bit of load, and off you go. Our customers come in here and put the world on the motor car, and that suspension just was never designed to carry five, six, seven, eight hundred kilograms all the time. It's just not made for that. It can get a, if, if it's a single cab, yes, it can take a ton mm -hmm. every now and then. Yeah. And if it's a double cab, it can take its five or 600 kilograms every now and then, but not all the time. So that's why we will select a suspension, shock and, and spring setup that is designed to carry that weight all the time. That's the difference. Okay. So the, the factory suspension is a average job average one of the whole average usage application and there's nothing wrong with it no, but it's average it was mm. it, it was decent i unfortunately fitted um, something else other than open EU, and i've been stuck with a hard ride for the last 50,000 kilometers mm. right enough and also i'm in phase two of my bolt so i'm adding additions i'm adding a aluminium clamshell rooftop tent with a 270 
So it's going to add a little bit of more weight, and I've had a few bump stop events in the past. I've got rough tracks in Botswana. So I want to prevent that because I don't want to damage the vehicle. Do you, do you want to know why you had a harsh ride with those shocks? Please go for it, yeah. Well, a couple of things. At, let's start at the back. You've got a, a, a shock mount pin coming off the chassis, sure. and you've got a shock mount pin coming off the, the leaf spring plate at the bottom. Okay. Those pins are designed to take the resistance of a shock absorber, the pressure that a shock offers, rebound and compression. Now there's a coil spring on that shock absorber. It's supposed to have a weight. That pin was never designed to stand on a spring. So first of all, they snap. I've seen it. I mean, I've been in this game 20 years. I've seen lots of broken um, shock mounts. Sure. And secondly, your, your uh, leaf spring is designed to travel. It's designed to move up and down. That's where the energy is absorbed. Now you've put another spring in there. Where's the energy going? It's going into the body. And that's the harshness that you're feeling. The car's doing this all the time. So the leaf spring is working against the coil over on the shock. Well, the coil over is you're working against everything. And in the front, you've now got a second coil spring. It, it's a stuff up. Yeah. yeah. All right. Luckily, I'm going to fix it today. Mm. Your BB51s are the bee's knees. Correct. Are they really worth it? What's the price? Uh, they're expensive. Uh, it varies from about 45 grand to uh, I think about 75, depending on vehicle. But a, a person gets a quote from us and they fall over. You know, I yet have to find a Porsche driver that walked into Porsche and complained about the price. He bought the Porsche because he knows it's the best and he can afford it. It's really that simple. We have the best shock absorber. It costs money. It's insane. It's insane. Yeah. I believe so. I believe so. Yeah. Well, maybe with phase uh, three, I'll yeah. consider. Okay. Um, we take Bultong as payment, by the way. I can start now. Okay. Yeah, okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, the difference between Old Man EMU and some of the other mics. Um, no. Uh, well, there's a well, no, no, I won't name brands, but there's a there's a lot of difference. First of all, Old Man EMU, and I love to say this, is the only. Okay brand made in Australia. I'm waiting to be proved wrong. Okay. I've been there. Okay. 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 All right. Very important. So everybody says, yeah, born and bred in Australia. Mm. Okay. I'll leave it there. Okay. It is a compression and rebound shock. All the others are rebound shocks. Okay. okay. Very important. It, the technology within the valving of an old man emu shock is designed and developed primarily by old man emu engineers and some of Monroe's engineers. It doesn't exist in another shock absorber. Whereas other brands of shock absorbers exist in the world with a different name and a different paint job, but the same technology is inside. Very important. Okay. An emu shock has got 26 valves inside no other shock comes close to 26 valves. I think the closest competitor is Monroe with 12. Okay. Everybody else, less than 12. Very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for. I mean, I can talk for three weeks. Education. Oh, mm. that's a. People need education so they don't spend money on the wrong thing and um, spend money on, for instance, a suspension before they fitted all of their gear, which they are buying. So, yeah. in my mind, if you've got to fit most of your gear, figure out what your weight capacities are, and then come in and yeah. talk to you guys about a load rate. For instance, yeah. we discussed the load rating on my leaf springs, and we settled on roughly 300 kilograms. Yeah. If that proves not to be enough, I can always come back and add on an additional a, Correct. A leaf or blade Correct. onto the A-Lords. It's just to help compensate for the additional load. Uh, another thing, you know, Old Man Emu has got four manufacturer approvals. Toyota, Nissan, Isuzu, and Ford. Toyota, you can buy a Land Cruiser now out the factory with Old Man Emu in it. We actually That's fitting it in the Durban factory for Toyota. No other brand has got that. Do you have any idea what the suspension gets, the, the, the testing that that suspension goes through to get an approval? It's insane. I've seen it. 
it, it is phenomenal. They try and destroy it. Essentially, they try and break it. And I've been privy to those tests. And I can confidently tell you, as I stand here, it is the best. I've seen it. Okay. Yeah. Making the wrong decision to yeah. Thank you very much. That's a pleasure. Um, shall we go see what the technical guys are up to when they uh, fit this? Would you mind showing us the difference between what I'm taking out and what you are installing so that we can show mm. the sizes mm. and the differences and mm. why it, it uh, makes a difference? Yeah, of Thanks. course. This is the difference between the Toyota Hilux factory leaf springs versus the old man EMU 300 kilogram constant rating springs. What grease is that and why does it seem to be so special? It's molly grease. Okay. Just a more denser, more waterproof grease. So you're the guy that are trying to not be on camera. I've got a surprise for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit camera shy. say oh the weld is not good but trust me what a or b have done here is enough for the tension of that eye that it doesn't need a 360 degree weld you know why weld something that you know what did they say don't fix it if it isn't broken it's a very very simple concept you're not going to tell much by looking at a shock absorber uh, on the outside but inside this baby twin tube uh, it's got gas it's got oil 26 valves inside an insane, insane improvement to the ride of your vehicle. It really just is, is phenomenal. The leaf spring, if you have a look at the design, that disc there is called an interleaf liner. It's got grease on it. It allows for nice movement. You want movement to take place when your car is going down the road. You don't want a harsh ride. You'll see that the blade tapers at the end. By tapering it thinner, this is where all the movement is happening. Again, lots of gentle movement. Um, one of the other design features that, that ARB pioneered, which has now been copied, is this cutoff. By cutting it off, this, the surface area that is transmitted through to the blade above is now a hell of a lot more than just a cutoff that way. So the chances of that blade if it were to overextend of snapping off is a lot less because it's got all of this area absorbing the tension that way okay. very very clever the sleeve means that every bush fits perfectly every time because be honest the temperature differences in the factory when they make that eye can cause the the, the cooling to change the diameter you know, even if it's by 0.1 of a millimeter, okay. it might mean that the bush is loose, or you can't put the bush in. But, 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 but by putting a sleeve there, every bush fits perfectly every time. The, yeah, the coil spring made in Australia. It is X5, what's it? X5K, or what? I don't know what it is. It's the best spring steel that's on the market. I can't remember at the moment. But it is not what's in this car now. It is also an improvement to the right. Now, I said earlier that a shock mount, you've got a top pin that'll go through there, and you've got a bottom pin. Those pins on this car are designed to take the resistance of a shock absorber. Now you put a spring in between them. You would have noticed that when you installed this, your car actually went up in height. Yes. It's standing on the shock pins. 
The other issue is that this spring is fighting against the movement of the axle, which is supposed to, I mean that leaf spring, is supposed to be, a, be absorbing the energies created as it goes up and down, and this prevents it. That's now fighting it. So the energy now goes into the body. Thank you very much. Pleasure. The installation of the Eldman EMU suspension is complete. I'm about to do the wheel alignment to finalize the uh, suspension setup. Please note that I am not being sponsored by anyone for any of the items on my vehicle. Um, this all comes out of my own pocket and it's my own decision to have spent the money on an aftermarket suspension. I am going to do another five or six changes on the vehicle in the near future to prepare us for our June 2020 father and son Botswana overland trip. Please subscribe, click on the bell to stay informed of all the changes that I will share on this channel. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate all of your views and your comments. And please post your comments on what suspension system you have for your overland setup. Thank you very much. Bye bye. But Mark was there. <laughs> now we're going to explain the difference between why. Old Man EMU is better than the stuff that I'm taking out. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs>